Hey there, I want to clarify some stuff about the real exchange rate. I'm going to do this in a stepwise process. Step one, you probably have the equation from the lecture, which is that the real exchange rate is equal to the nominal exchange rate. Now it doesn't say nominal, it's just an E. I'm going to write nominal. And that's divided by P over PF where PF is the foreign price level and P is the domestic price level. Now also note that E in any of its forms is the price in dollars. Now I'm saying dollars because I'm American and this class is being taught in the US. So to me, that is the domestic currency that you have to pay to get one unit of foreign currency. Okay, so that's step one, just kind of start with that. And then I think we should rewrite it. It might help, instead of having this compound fraction, just multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. You have this written out differently. Step two, note that if PPP holds, then the nominal exchange rate is equal to what the purchasing power parity exchange rate would be. And that is equal to P over PF. Let's take that result into step three then the real exchange rate is just, I'm going to take this P over PF and plug it in for that nominal rate, then times PF over P. And you'll notice that that is going to equal one because those P's will cancel and those PF's will cancel. Step four, you can see that if PPP holds, then the real exchange rate is equal to one. And that's kind of a definition. And that part is easy. The harder part is figuring out whether the currency is overvalued or undervalued if the real exchange rate is not equal to one. So let's go ahead and present a scenario. So how can we get a real exchange rate greater than one? For that to happen, we need the nominal rate to be greater than the purchasing power parity rate. So what we're looking for is the first term on the right side of the equation in step three, if that gets bigger, then the value is going to get bigger than one. That means the real exchange rate would be bigger than one. Well, what does it mean if the nominal exchange rate is greater than the purchasing power parity exchange rate? If that's the case, then it's going to cost you more dollars to buy a unit of foreign currency than it should. Now, when I say should, I mean if PPP holds. Okay, so I know that's a normative statement, but remember that these exchange rates are how many dollars are you paying for that foreign currency? So in this scenario where the real exchange rate is greater than one, we're paying more dollars for the foreign currency than we should. If you have to pay more, that means that your dollar is undervalued. That means you can buy less stuff in the foreign country with your money than if you spent it on stuff domestically. Remember the whole idea of a real exchange rate. Real means goods and services. It means the stuff that you can buy with your money, right? Nominal is just the, the numbers on the price tag, right? And those don't mean as much to us as the stuff that we can buy. All right, so for step five, I want to look at a real exchange rate less than one. So basically, we're just going to reverse the argument that we had for greater than one and see what happens. Okay, so I've just taken all of the uh, inequalities and uh, say more, fewer, over, under, more, less, those things have just been switched when the real exchange rate is less than one. And then I, I wanna go to step six. I just have a note that looking at the real exchange rate is just a shortcut for comparing the nominal exchange rate to the purchasing power parity exchange rate. All right, I hope that helped. If you have any more questions, let me know.